Hey, welcome back to Bear Squared. On this channel, we simplify educational tech. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can set a rubric for your assignments on Google Classroom. So go to your classroom and obviously um, find the class that you wanna set this for. I'm gonna go here and I've already scheduled a summative assessment and I've created a topic for it, okay? So if I go to like my topics, I can go to my sum, I've created this topic here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a rubric to this and I'll show you how I've done this, okay? So I'm gonna click on the three dots and edit. And so here is the, the assignment, I've given the instructions here and I've added the actual assignment here as a PDF but I wanna add a rubric to this, okay? I wanna add a rubric to it. So here you can see on the right hand side at the bottom, it says add a rubric, so plus rubric. I could go ahead and do that. Uh, I could create a rubric, I could reuse one that I've already got, or I can import one from Sheets, okay? You can reuse a rubric if you've previously got an assignment, okay, and you know what criteria you're doing. So for example, this is criterion B and C, so I could go ahead and use, reuse that rubric. However, the rubric for this summative is actually task specific. Most rubrics should be task specific for your assignments. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a rubric. So depending on what program you're teaching, you're gonna have your specific rubrics. You can go ahead and find some on ibl.org, um, but I already have a, a rubric that I'm gonna to add to this. So let me go ahead and find that, here it is. So I'm gonna go ahead, copy that. That's, so level one, two, this is what I want students to write for level one, two. So let's go ahead and write this here. Okay, so criterion title, for my first part, it's criterion B, which is, okay, investigating patterns. And then criterion description, you can go ahead and get your description for the criteria. So for example, students should be able to select and apply mathematical problem solving. I can take this and that will be my description, okay? So go ahead and do that. Now for points, okay, so the points here, level title and the description. So this is where you're now adding your task specific criteria over here, okay? so. How many points are required and what's, what's the title level? So this can be one to two. I'm gonna add my description here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that description. Now students can see exactly what is expected from for their learning for that part of the criteria. If I click on the three dots here, uh, once you've added one here, you could go back, you could click on the three dots and you can delete the level. So maybe it wasn't something that you wanted, you can go ahead and delete that level. Okay, so we've got level one to two. Now we need to go back to this one here, points required. This is gonna be level three to four, okay? And I'm gonna add my description. So text here, my task specific text, and I'm gonna add that to the description, okay? So I've got the description here. All right, I'm gonna carry on. I'm gonna add another level here. Oh, I've added it to the wrong side, okay? So I, I don't wanna add it there. I wanna add it to the, to the opposite side. So I could go back here and do a plus button. And now I can say here, this is requirement is six levels. This is five to six. And the description I can add from my rubric. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete this off. Okay, so I've completed my level one to eight. This was the, the extra part that I, I actually, I didn't want here. So I'm gonna have to delete, I'm gonna have to delete that piece off, okay? So here I can click on the dots and I can just go ahead and delete that because that wasn't a part that was mistakenly I added um, to the wrong side, so I want to delete that off. So the point score is in descending order. You might want to actually change this to ascending order, and then you can see it's level one to two, three to four, five, six, seven to eight, unless you want it flipped over, okay? Um, so that's what's going on here. Now, what if a student hasn't submitted the work? You might actually want to add here level zero, okay? So for zero points, okay, this level is zero, and you can add your description there. This sort of covers my back because if students haven't submitted their work or they haven't reached the, you know, any part of the criteria, I have um, a level zero as well, okay? So that's that. It, it tells me here, so it's out of eight points because my point requirement right to the end is eight. So I've got eight points up there, yeah? So I can add an, another criteria. Remember this assessment is a summative for BC. I can go ahead and add my criteria for um, my BC as well, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You can skip this part. Okay, so I've added 
all my criteria now, all the descriptors for each level. Now, because this is eight points and the first uh, criteria, criterion B was eight points, it's totaled it to 16 points, okay? So students can get anywhere between zero to 16 points. That's not entirely true because each criteria is assessed separately. Okay, so um, criterion B is gonna be from zero to eight and the criteria C here is from zero to eight, okay? So although that this is says 16, I'm gonna be taking those as separate grades. Okay, so now that that's done, we've added the criteria here, what options do we have? You can use this here, it says use scoring, okay? Any point values you've added will be permanently deleted. So we don't wanna do that. When you add an assignment, you can do the point scores, okay? But we don't wanna do that, we wanna to stick to um, our values, okay, the levels that we've got in our rubric. So let's just cancel that. And we can go ahead and save this now. So this is what I was talking about, the point value. In fact, what you can do is you can just keep this ungraded and then you can use your rubric to um, grade this summative. If you found that helpful, please consider subscribing. There are so many more EdTech videos on the G Suite that you may find really super useful. As always, I'll see you in the next one.